Hey guys, welcome back to channel. So in today's video, I'll be discussing regarding what is Google file system uh, in cloud computing. So uh, first of all, uh, let's begin with this. So uh, we have a, a common idea of how the Google works. And uh, you may be knowing like Google has so many products like Google Translate, Google Drive, YouTube and many other files and photos of different and billions of users. So you might be thinking like Google will have a kind of a different kind of specialized hardware or systems or some other kind of processes for uh, handling this kind of data. Well, that's not uh, entirely correct. So uh, Google has got its own file system. So that's called as a Google file system GFS. So in today's video, we'll be seeing what is GFS and uh, what are the various components and how the GFS are formed. So let's begin. So first of all, let's focus on this diagram. So uh, you can see some components, some blocks, some small, small uh, uh, figures and all this there. So uh, you have first of all this GFS master. So uh, this GFS master controls this client as well as this server. So uh, basically this GFS cluster is nothing but it has a GFS master, then three chunk servers it has got and which serves five different clients. So you have this GFS master and two clients which are there and these uh, two clients are segregated into uh, three different bifurcations and uh, there are a number of chunk servers. So this uh, blocks or this dotted boxes which you can see are chunk servers and inside this you can see C0, C1, C3, C4 and C5. So uh, we have five different clients taken. And so uh, each of these uh, uh, clients are replicated into three different chunk servers uh, like in case of any node failure happens so uh, it's like uh, in, uh, in some cases it's like if C0 uh, fails to perform or uh, C0 is inaccessible then you can obtain C0 from this third replica or if C1 is not there then you can uh, access it from the second replica. So uh, this is how uh, it's structured. So uh, this setup like of a GFS master client and some kind of some set of servers are called as GFS cluster. Uh, then this client servers and masters are all running on the Linux machines and each runs a server processes at user level and these are known as user level server processes. So all these have a kind of processes which runs at the server and it is operated at the user level and so it's called as a user level server process. Uh, next in this entire kind of uh, setup that is the google file system you have some kind of data that is data about data you have metadata so those metadata are all managed by the gfs master and it communicates effectively between the clients and the chunk servers so uh, you have this setup so in this uh, you know like normally in case we have the clients and servers now uh, in this especially you have the chunk servers and why the name chunk is there so chunks means a small block of data and is obtained from the file system. So uh, when the system files are created or when the configuration happens at that time, we uh, provide some kind of commands uh, at runtime and then we create some kind of chunks or we just uh, segregate into small, small blocks. And these are of size of 64 MB. So it's fixed size, uh, fixed variate is there that is immutable and a 64 data bit is obtained in order to gather this chunk server. So this chunk servers are then replicated across the entire cluster. And the clients interact directly with the chunk servers for a data transfer. So you can see this clients are there inside this chunk server. So this dotted boxes uh, outside are the servers. So we have the uh, three different uh, replica of the servers and inside this we have small small clients are there. So it communicates directly with the servers. So uh, uh, direct proportional communication happens between the client and the server in GFS and chunks replicated across the three machines in case of any node failure or liability. Like I said, if C0 uh, fails to perform or C0 is inaccessible, then you can obtain at the third instance or the uh, third cluster. Like if C5 is not there, then you can obtain from the uh, third one that is uh, from here. Uh, next, GFS stores three replica by default and can be at any levels defined by the user. So. Uh, at first GFS has this uh, setup like uh, if you have a GFS master and client and then server then it will automatically by default at the time of initiation uh, will have uh, three different set of servers but uh, 
user has that control whether how many uh, levels of a replication might have to designate so it's like entirely depending on the user whether he has to maintain the default uh, three levels of replication or five or six or even at any higher number so uh, likewise the size of that cluster will go on increasing uh, then the system interface is same like any other system like normal uh, you have the user interface you have the command line the graphical user interface and uh, all like that and it especially provides a snapshot and append operation kind of uh, system interface and this specially allows to create a copy of the files or the folder system uh, in a more cheaper way than uh, by any other means and the applications contain specific uh, file system that is FS APIs executed by the code like for some client application you have some client code to have been written at that place so uh, it needs to be executed at some time or later time and its communication is done by the GFS master and the chunk servers is established so first of all whenever any client has to be uh, communicated with the GFS master and the uh, server then a code has to be written for the client and then it establishes a communication link or a network will be there uh, that links are this one so it communicates with the GFS master and the chunk servers uh, then in most of the file systems uh, you uh, encounter a POSIX API uh, whereas in GFS this POSIX API is not included and so uh, any need of uh, Linux V node layer hooking is not required in especially in case of GFS like in any other file system uh, apart from GFS you can uh, see that POSIX API and one uh, foremost important thing is that no caching of the file data is performed by the clients or the servers because because uh, in Google file system you have all the data in a streamlined workload so it's like in a stream you get uh, in a particular set of windows in certain, uh, certain uh, data lengths or data bits is there so uh, because of that streamlined workload or streamed workload caching does not benefit the clients uh, by any means but whereas to some extent servers have at least a consequence of buffer cache already which maintains a record of this uh, frequently requested local files or frequently accessed local files so there is uh, no need for any caching because uh, servers will have its own buffer whereas clients need not have any kind of uh, access for frequent uh, local files so uh, that was all regarding the google file system and cloud computing so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to educate by watching this video please do like share comment and most importantly don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching this video